Now, brittle failure, while we say that it happens very, very quickly, it doesn't necessarily mean that we can't tell where it started from. Like, where did that crack first begin? Um, we don't necessarily get to see what the defect was that caused that crack to begin there, but we can find it fairly easily. Now, how do we do that? Well, this is two cross sections, goodness, of the same piece that got broken off. They could be joined together if we just kind of like squished them back together and put some glue on them. And what you might be able to see here if you're looking at it is you'll see that there's these V-shaped kind of chevron markings. And the magic thing is, if you keep on following them, following them left, following them left, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, whoa, wait a minute, it reversed. And it actually points, interestingly enough, to where the crack began. Those little V-shaped chevron markings actually point to where the failure began. So there was some sort of impurity right there, some sort of defect in our material that caused failure at that point. That's where the crack began, and then the crack propagated extremely quickly, which led to those chevron markings. Okay. Extremely quickly, which led to those chevron markings. Now, other ways that they can fail is through intergranular crack propagation. Whew. That just means between grains. If a crack is going to grow somewhere, it's going to find the point on um, the weakest link. And so usually the weakest way to go is to go for where there's already more or less a gap. Remember between those um, grains, we already have less of a bond there because there's that gap, it's not oriented correctly, and so they can't touch as close as they want to. So it's much easier to press through here than anywhere else and divide it. However, we can also have transgranular crack propagation, which goes through the grains, okay? Through the grains, and my racer's not working right now, but that's okay. Transgranular crack propagation, which goes through the grains. And how this happens and why this happens is gonna depend on several things. First off, it's going to depend on your grain size. Are they large grains or small grains? This is four millimeters right here, while this is 160 millimeters. So this is literally 40 times, you know, more that we're looking at right here. And so in that case, these are very, very large grains. It's going to be easier for them to cut through sometimes. And also, it might be a more brittle metal. Not necessarily, but it might be. It's all going to depend on what has, um, what kind of steel you have and how it is being, how it is failing, like what the conditions are at that time. So that's it for this one. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.